Well hello there Nibble Nashers, it's your pal Al here once again and today I'll be asking you the question can I get any more than 640 kilobytes of RAM in a PC or a PC XT? Of course nobody needs any more than 640 kilobytes of RAM though, right? In this video I'm going to show you both the theory of why the PC came with 640k RAM maximum. After that, I'm going to show you just how to make your PC or PC XT provide and work with up to one megabyte of RAM. Now remember that the 8088 or the 8088 as some call it, is the CPU which came with the original PC and also the PC XT. The biggest problem with the 8088 was the fact that it had an 8-bit external data bus versus the 16-bit on the 8086. Now like the 8086 though, it has a 20-bit address bus. This means that it has 2 to the 20 addressable bytes, so that's 1048576 bytes or 1 megabyte of RAM. So this poses the question how come the PC and the PC XT could only address 640 kilobytes of usable RAM? Well, let's have a look. Firstly, let's look at how the system was laid out. Every single block or segment of memory was done in 64 kilobytes of RAM. So all the way from 0H all the way down to A000H uh, allowed us the space between uh, 0K and 640K. There's a little bit of reserved memory at the start of that first 64K for system stuff. After A000 came a whole bunch of unusable space. It's 384 kilobytes of space right up until that one megabyte. The table that you can see in front of you shows the upper memory area of the IBM PC, the original 5150 and the 5160. You can see the address ranges from the bottom, 640 kilobytes, all the way up to 1024 kilobytes or 1 megabyte. Now, you can see straight away that a lot of these areas are reserved, some for RAM and some for ROM. So for example, if you wanted to display information on your screen which used the RAM in an EGA card, then that space between A000 and B000, which is between 640K and 704K, needs to be used in there. You can't use it for software, in other words. But if you didn't have an EGA card, then you could use it. Then above that is the, another 4K for the monochrome display adapter card and then the CGA card between uh, B8000 and BBFFF. The following section is reserved for ROMs. So from 768K all the way up to 800K is reserved for video cards BIOS expansion ROMs. And then from 800K all the way up to 976K, it's reserved for any non-video cards BIOS expansion ROMs. For example, I have an XT IDE compact flash card and it has its own BIOS and so it enables it to boot. And I have to put that ROM into some area in addressable RAM. And the addressable area for my card is C8000 hex. You might also have a network interface card and on the network interface card you might have a boot option ROM as well that boots over a network. So things like that, they need to sit in the addressable RAM somewhere and even if they're ROMs they still need to be addressed over the normal range of memory. One thing you will have noticed though is that there were lots of empty spaces there and there was obviously a lot of space in there that wasn't used. Maybe you didn't have an EGA card, maybe you didn't have a monochrome card, maybe you didn't have a CGA card, or maybe you didn't have a card in your machine which used a particular ROM. So you've got all that space at some parts that isn't used. So later on in the life of the PC and the PCXT, somebody had a clever idea to use that space if it wasn't used, and they called this the upper memory block. Now, 
not every program could address this because the, the software just didn't understand how to use memory above 640 kilobytes conventional. However, um, there were a number of programs which could use this. Generally, these turned out to be device drivers or what were called TSRs, or Terminate and Stay Resident. So applications such as ANSI.sys, DOSKey, um, mouse drivers, all of those could be loaded into that area. And the important thing about loading them into the upper memory block is that it frees up that all important 640 kilobytes area for your real applications. And this is what I'm going to show you today with this card. So here's the card in question. It's tiny, as you can see. It, um, it fits quite easily into the uh, PC. It is, it's not a long card. Um, but uh, one thing to do, one thing to note is that obviously it doesn't have a spare blanking plate. So you're going to need one of these to tidy up the back of the machine. Okay. So. Um, Having a look at it, it's pretty basic. Um, these are the RAM chips, there's nothing to it, and then the um, memory, conventional memory is here, and the upper memory is here. So they are configured via these two dip switches. So you can see here uh, on my configuration, or hopefully you can see, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how good the, the image quality is, so apologies if you can't see this small text, but basically the text here says 0 to 64K all the way up to 640K. So these two chips basically will provide you all the SRAM that you need um, for a standard conventional 640 kilobyte PC. And that's where a normal PC stops. A normal PC PCXT. However, there is a thing in DOS 5, I think, and up, which is to have a high memory allowance called an upper memory block. So this is not the same as um, XMS or EMS, because those areas are over the 1 meg. This is above 640k, but less than 1 meg. And you can see here, these, these dip switches relate to 640k to 704k, 704k to 768, and so on, all the way up to 960k. And so in this particular configuration I've got set up, I have an AST 6-pack plus in my XT, and that has 384 kilobytes of RAM. Coupled with the 256 kilobytes of SRAM I have on the motherboard itself, that gives me 640K. So I don't actually need the 640K that this card provides, so I have all 640K switched off via these dip switches. And then you'll also see that I have the first four, uh, sorry, three switches switched off here. So the areas between 640 and 832K switched off. Now the reason for that, if we have a look over the side, there's some handy information on there. Memory address range shows where some typical conflicts could happen. So you remember just a second ago I was mentioning that um, the, the, the some cards will use those upper memory areas. So for example if you have an EGA or a VGA card it will probably use the area between A0 and B0 for the VGA RAM and then monochrome and CGA uses between um, B0 and C0 for, for their VRAM and then there's the BIOS of course for the EGA and VGA cards um, they're not present in usual MDA or CGA cards that also occupies the area between C0 and D0 and obviously if you have other cards in your machine as well, like I have an XT IDE CF card, now the default for that card is to boot from D000 on the EEPROM, so I changed the allocation of that card to sit in another area. So having a look there, that kind of leaves me with only these two last switches, which is option ROMs such as HDD controllers, option ROMs as such as target system BIOS, so, sorry, a large system BIOS. So fortunately, or at least I hope not, I don't have any conflicts in those two areas, so that frees up the area between 832 kilobytes and 960 kilobytes. So hopefully, uh, if you have a CGA card, you can free up some more RAM, but basically this gives me access to a whole bunch of RAM that I couldn't ever have um, used before. So I'll show you how to do that in real life operation next. 
So firstly, when you uh, plug in the card, you shouldn't notice any difference at all to the amount of memory that you have, uh, simply because it won't be allocated in any specific way. So uh, what we need to do firstly is to have a look at uh, the tools. So we can grab um, two tools. Um, one of them is called Use UMBS, Upper Memory Blocks that is and also DOS Max. So if I just go into use UMBS, there's a tool called test UMB and it, can, it shows you that it's found some RAM here, uh, which is the stuff that I've configured, which is great, fantastic. Um, and do remember it says down there some of it is video RAM so it doesn't necessarily mean it's the UM, um, UMB memory from the, the card so there's a sys driver in there called use AUMBSYS and if we go back there's also that utility called DOSMAX now if we go to our config sys Having a look down here, these are the important aspects of it. So first of all, DOS equals UMB. So on a machine which has got a you know four or eight or twelve or whatever megs of memory, most of the time you'll see this there. DOS equals UMB. It just basically means that it will load the um, the DOS itself into the upper memory block, freeing up that all important 640 kilobytes of conventional RAM as much as possible. And then you can see that I've got device equals C colon utils use UMBS and then basically you're allocating the area of RAM which it will set for the upper memory block. Now obviously this is specific to the areas of RAM that you have configured as the UMB on those DIP switches in the card itself. Then it will allow you to run DOS Max after then and then Shell Max and basically that um, enables the loading of command.com into the higher memory area, the upper memory area. So once that's all configured in your config sys, you should see something like this. Config sys has worked. It's loaded use UMB to provide the upper memory block for usage. It's then loaded DOS Max, which loads the DOS system into upper memory block. And then finally Shell Max loaded the command.com or the DOS shell into the upper memory block. So you can see here that DOS Max has moved all of those areas which are usually in conventional memory, such as the FCDS, the buffers, all that sort of, uh, those environment variables are all moved into upper memory as well as the DOS high data. So basically that's the command.com uh, and so forth. It's all been moved into an upper memory area. So if we have a look at um, the um, use of memory. Oh. Okay, right. You can see now that we're using the UMB driver which has to load in conventional RAM but fortunately it's only 256 bytes big. Um, then it's shunted the, um, the command interpreter, command.com which is a whopping 5k and it's popped that into upper memory. Um, DOS Max then itself is another resident and it's popped it into upper memory as well and then all of the sort of files and so forth that all those information all of the information there is stored in upper memory so that frees up an awful lot of conventional RAM so you can see um, the total amount of RAM available um, to begin with obviously after loading anything is 720 kilobytes so that's up from the normal 640 kilobytes obviously then you it's deducted 46k here and a few little bits and bobs from that for MS-DOS providing you with um, 606 or 592k and then in the, in the end you have um, 113.824k 
uh, free of upper memory so um, you could use that for other things but basically um, it gives you a lot more free memory than you would have in the conventional area which is the, the main thing. So you, you can use things like um, DOS key for example um, which, uh, allow, which does allow it to load high. Now if we have a look here now we can see that DOS key, usually it would be loaded in the conventional area, it's actually loaded it into upper memory. So that's freeing up that 4K that would normally be using the all important conventional now into the upper memory block. So we still have that 592K free in conventional. Alright, so there you go. Well, that about does it for me today. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back soon with some more content, but in the meantime, if you've got any suggestions or questions or comments, please hit me up below in the comments section. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.